everyone. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining The Talent Show, where you will meet the people that power T-Tech. I'm Rebecca, and I will be your host for today's show. We are so excited that you are joining us. Thank you so much for coming back again and again or joining us for the very first time. We are glad you're here because we have designed a very special show for you today. We're going to have some fun. I was just backstage with our guests, so I know it's going to be a good time. We're going to learn a lot along the way about things that you can implement in your own career, as well as Pride and our employee resource group, PRISM, what is workforce management. So we've got a lot in store for you today. So thank you for joining us. So Empathy. We're going to talk a lot about it today. How do we harness the power of empathy in today's workforce? How do we leverage it as our competitive advantage in today's world? And why is it important? How does it help us build an inclusive culture? Today's guest is going to build the case for empathy. So we are glad that he's here. Um, as we begin our celebration of Pride Month here at T Tech, I know we're already a few days into the month. So happy Pride Month, everybody. Um, before we meet today's guest and get into the show, I see we're seeing a lot of great people in the chat already. We want to meet you. Wherever you are in the world, we are again so glad that you're here joining us for today's celebration and important conversation around Pride Month. So, hey, oh, hey, Michael McDonald, woohoo for sure. Nice to see you here today. Chelsea, so excited for you to also be here to learn alongside us. Uh, Patu oh, I, I'm I hope I say your name right, Patuxolo Buso, first time joining. Welcome. We are glad you're here. We hope you learn a lot. Michelle, happy Pride Month, Canada. Deborah, thank you so much. First time joining. So we're glad for those that have returned again and again and for those that are joining us for the first time. So while we're here to talk about Pride Month, our employee resource group, PRISM, empathy, the things that you can build in your uh, in your workplace. We wanted to also talk, I can't help but <laughs> talk about workforce management because today's guest is a leader in workforce management. If you're not in the customer experience industry, you might be wondering, what the heck is that? So uh, our guest today will be breaking it down in a beautiful way for us. And of course, besides all of that learning and meeting the amazing people behind T-Tech, we want you to walk away with skills that you can build in your own personal and career development. So we're going to be talking a lot about why empathy is important as a competitive advantage and how each of us can build a more inclusive workforce with that. So today's guest is a leader in workforce management. He is also a founding member of our PRISM group, which is an employee resource group for the LGBTQIA and allies community. So yes, he's a little busy, everyone. So we're grateful that he's had a moment to drop by with us to enlighten us and share a little bit more about pride, PRISM, and empathy. So let's bring on our guest, Marshall Lee. Hello. Hey, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you, Rebecca? Good. Thank you. Again, thank you so much for, for joining us. I know, especially given Pride Month, you are incredibly busy. So we appreciate you taking out the, the time to help our audience have a better understanding really about a lot of things because we're going to dive into a few different topics today. And of course, we're going to have some fun along the way. So if you could tell us a little bit more about you and how you started your career in workforce management and here at T-Tech. And I hear there's a little something about the wizard. I, I don't think it's the Wizard of Oz, but if you could tell us a little bit more about that, let's have uh, let's have some fun today. Thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's, there, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so workforce management, uh, for those who don't know, workforce management um, is one of those things that, you know, when you're in the fourth grade and people say, what do you want to be when you grow up? No one really says, I want to do call center scheduling or I want to do um, staffing for, for contact centers. In a, in a nutshell, what we do is 
we make sure that there's the right number of people in the right place at the right time with the right skill to make sure things are handled. Um, if someone's waiting for a really long time uh, to get through, or if there aren't enough people to get a process, or there aren't enough people to make sure that a task is handled, then already that customer experience is bad, whether it's back office or frontline. Um, it doesn't always go the way that people expect. And that, that, that doesn't go well for your customer experience or your business or your product. Um, and the wizard, mm. well, um, there's an organization called the Society of Workforce Planning Professionals or SWPP. And um, I'm privileged enough to be on the, the board of advisors for that organization and also get to speak um, at that. And a few years ago at the conference, um, there was a session that we uh, started called Ask the Workforce Wizard. And being a person who's not afraid to throw on a costume, um, I had a hat and a robe and I was the wizard and became the wizard. And there's there's a hat and there's a whole costume that goes with it. And so I kind of joke that in workforce, we work our magic and we, we do the things um, with that. And so workforce management is really about applying people and resources to the demand of customers, but also making sure that we do it in a way that is good for the business, but also good for employees and good for the people actually doing the work so that they're engaged, they're taken care of, and we do it in a way that's that's good for them, if that makes sense. Well, Marshall, I'll have to say this is the first time we've had um, some props on the show. <laughs> So thank you uh, for sharing that. And I think what you're highlighting is really important is about that piece of taking care of employees. And that's something that's very important here at T-Tech as well. So, um, and as a customer, which everyone on this call has probably called in or needed um, customer service support along the way. So to know that there's the, the wizards and the magical people in the back end um, making things happen. So that we all have an improved customer experience is, is really great. So thank you for sharing a little bit more about that. Could you tell us again, just maybe dive in a little bit more to that part about how workforce management also, because of all of the different things that you are all collaborating along different departments, how does this help create an inclusive culture and why is that important? Absolutely. So when, when you're working, uh, in workforce management, one of the things that you you have to do is you have to understand, first of all, um, what should my people be doing? In fact, when you're doing workforce planning, that's the first thing you have to understand is what type of work, um, what type of environment, and what is the training and how does the work get to them? But then you have to understand the culture within which they'll do it. In order to be an effective workforce planner, you have to understand who's going to do it, what they're going to be doing, and then in what context they'll be doing it. Because really workforce management can make or break that culture. Um, if you're beginning to understand the demographics, uh, the needs of your associates, the people that you'll be planning for, you become a much better workforce planner. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big geek when it comes to sci-fi, when it comes to um, fantasy and fiction and that kind of thing. Star Wars is also a big thing for me. And we talk about, uh, you know, one of the things in Star Wars is the force, right? Um, oftentimes I'll say, may the workforce be with you. Um, when it comes to the force, it's always the force guides us, surrounds us is, is what binds us together. In a way, that's the workforce. And I don't mean us, I mean the employees. To be a good Jedi, you have to understand what creates it and where it moves and where it goes. The same is true with your employees. You have to seek to understand where they're coming from, what they need, and where they're going to be. There's an equation that you really also have to understand, which is CX is driven by EX. EX being your employee experience creates your CX, which is your customer experience. Unhappy employees create unhappy customers. If I'm not motivated for my job, if I'm not driven to want to be where I am, then I am not going to do well. Um, I, I, one of the interesting things is I think Charles Dickens, um, when he wrote A Christmas Carol, may have actually unlocked um, the secret to business strategy and success. Um, Marley said to Scrooge, 
um, our business should have been people. And that's so true because if our business is people, um, we do really well. If you want to take care of your product and you want your product and your brand to succeed, take care of your people. And in workforce management, we can do really well by understanding what types of schedules, what types of training, what types of meetings are needed, what type of workplace and time culture we have to provide to associates so that we can do a good job in workforce planning. And then that transitions to other organizations. We don't, or other parts within the organization, we don't create staffing models and structures in a vacuum. We work with TA, we work with training, we work with quality, we work with product. We have to understand all facets of the organization and then provide them the inputs that they need. So when you begin to partner with other organizations and other groups, we also know that retention and lower attrition provide a better overall bottom line for the organization. So if you create a culture where people don't want to leave, so you understand your associates and you provide for their needs, meet them where they're at, create a culture where people can be their whole self at work or bring all of who they are, understand and empathize, then they're less likely to leave. You're going to increase increase uh, retention, decrease attrition. Your product's going to be better. Your overall customer service is going to be better and you'll do more. And the way that applies in workforce management is understanding the type of scheduling that's needed, understanding the type of training that's needed so you can provide the space and the room for people to succeed at their jobs so that people can do really well. Um, oftentimes, this means um, taking the extra time to go farther and deeper in those strategies related to scheduling, related to quality and, and, and doing things, if, if that makes sense. I can indeed see why you are called the wizard, <laughs> Marshall, because that is a, a lot to, you know, it, it's as I think when we've been talking before about workforce management, it's a big puzzle. And how are you putting together all aspects of the business? Really exciting to, to really get to deep dive into each of those areas as well. I do have to go to the chat because Vangelis also said, may the force be with you. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think you're resonating uh, with the audience over there um, so we can all geek out together for sure. And Michelle says EX drives the CX. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking about this, you know, obviously that is a lot that you have going on um, as the director of workforce management, ensuring customer success, employee success. Let's talk a little bit and maybe you should put your other hat on now, Marshall, but let's talk about your PRISM hat and tell us a little bit more about PRISM here at T-Tech and maybe uh, other uh, of our audience have either employee resource groups at their company or why it's important to look for companies that have employee resource groups. So can you jump into a little bit more about uh, PRISM and the importance of uh, our employee resource groups? Absolutely. And this and this fits uh, right into um, this fits right into the workforce management piece as well. Um, as the as the chair of the PRISM group, for T-Tech, um, employee resource groups are really close to what I see as important to a company's culture. Um, part of workforce management and workforce planning strategy is creating that environment that employees can bring their entire self to work. They can be all of who they are, regardless of what that is, um, whether it's being part of a marginalized community or a community that needs support and services, whether it's a community that um, is one that isn't always heard. That can be along different demographic lines. That can be a veterans group. That could be a, uh, in any class that, that has some type of need. Oftentimes it is like trying to create a schedule model where you're trying to fit all these Tetris pieces together. All an employee resource group is, is a group that allows an organization to hear and provide for the needs of employees regardless of what that might be. It's empowered by that particular community or that particular group. Um, it is supported by the organization and then creates events, programs, and other supportive um, programs and philosophies within the organization that allow inclusivity that support the business directive, but also allow the employees to be 
themselves and transition into a successful work model. So this could be for a veterans group allowing the transition to uh, civilian work and, and work in that space. For an LGBTQI group, this could be allowing a safe space to have your identity at work without having to hide or conceal or, or whatever uh, whom you are. For other groups or demographics, this could be just allowing all of yourself to be there without it having to be the one identifying thing people see, just letting you be yourself. Um, there can be filters that, that you might apply so that you might mask part of you. And when you do that, that blocks your creativity. It blocks your feeling of this is my community at work. This is um, a place I can be, and this is a place I can invest all of myself. Because when you feel at home and invested and able to participate and strategize and provide who you are, then you're less likely to invest and stay. If you can fully operate as your whole self in any environment, regardless of who you are, you're more likely to stay engaged at that place. And if the organization is open to that, that style of engagement, then the employee is more likely to develop, grow, and stay. So employee resource groups provide resources for employees as well as the employer to provide that two-way communication channel to see past any filters that might exist within the organization and within the employee to provide that two-way communication and to provide that two-way experience of shared growth and community within diversity so that we can realize at the end of the day, we're all just humans trying to get along and work together for shared goals. And that's really where the empathy comes into play. Wow, thank you so much for that, um, Marshall, because it has been such a, I've enjoyed all of the conversations I've had with our employee resource groups here at T-Tech. And, you know, we might have audience members looking to join T-Tech or on, in a career search for other companies. So it may be something that they can, um, you know, be on the outlook for as well. And so I want to take our next question as we are about to dive into empathy over to the chat and ask our audience, what does empathy mean to you? We're going to get into it a little bit more and how it's a competitive advantage in today's workplace and, and why it's important to build and flex our empathy muscle. But we want to hear from you as well. And just a, a couple other people I want to give a shout out to. We have um, Cape Town in the house with Deandre. We have Prinyaka from India. Hello, Ebony. Well said, Marshall. She shares with all of us. And I see Jasmine in the chat. And we also have um, another Sarah from Egypt. So really, your message, I hope, resonates globally with everybody that is tuning in here today. So yeah, let us know what empathy means to you. But now we'll jump in um, back over to Marshall. So Marshall, we've been promising our audience today how um, empathy can help them, like why it's important, how it can help them in their workplace. Uh, so could you share with us a little bit more about why you highlighted this in our previous conversation? Absolutely. As we move into deeper into the 21st century, um, we are seeing rapid advances in technology and rapid advances in management styles. Um, and IQ was kind of the thing we pushed in the 70s through the 90s. Um, the more you could learn about computer skills and hard skills, the farther you would go. Uh, you needed a degree just to get in the door. Now, with artificial intelligence, with uh, te technology supported roles, um, with different types of learnings that, that are available, oftentimes for, for roles that would have required a bachelor's degree or even a master's degree 10 years ago that are outside of, of certified or licensed professions, you may not even need that, that level of degree anymore, but you need the experience. Um, these are just shifts in, in the way that the markets and job, job world is working. What is needed is emotional intelligence. You have to be able to deal with different kinds of people. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to manage. You have to be able to regulate your emotions and understand others. One thing that's going to happen, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't have, or 20 years ago, I didn't have the, the world's information at my fingertips, just in my pocket. Now I do. Um, 
And now with AI or with Chad GPT, you know, replacing even blockchain as the, as the conversation of, of where technology is going, um, we're seeing that what AI is going to be able to do and what technology is going to be able to do is augment and support our roles. What it can't do is create that human connection, that context, that contact around everything else. And empathy and understanding are going to be the things and the skill sets and the soft skills that we have to have in order to stay competitive and in order to stay relevant as employees and as other things. Without empathy, without the ability to understand people, communicate, negotiate, and understand, you're not going to be able to engage and you're not going to be able to grow and develop um, professionally. It's, it's just kind of the way things are going to be. Um, so these, these what people used to call soft skills um, with communication and um, relating to others are going to be more important than they've ever been, especially as we globalize more and as community becomes something that means something different than it used to be. I'm not just working with someone down the street or around the block who might have a similar uh, perspective to me. It's going to be someone who has a completely different worldview, understanding, or life than I might. So I have to learn not only empathy for my perspective, but I have to learn how to empathize with other people as humans and how to connect with others from other perspectives and other places. And really that's where employee resource groups, that's where kind of stepping outside your emotional comfort zone and your, your kind of intellectual comfort zone as well become really important because you have to be able to digest and seek to understand more than you used to have to in the past. And the people who can develop that sense of understanding um, and be able to communicate, not necessarily agree with everything, but see to communicate and see to understand are going to be the ones who succeed and thrive in the future, especially in the workplace. Yeah, and, and thank you so much for bringing up the seek to understand. That is a, a big value here at T-Tech and one that as I started in my venture here is so important because uh, as you said, we're a global audience or a global employee base and there's so many different things to, to learn about. So you, you do have to kind of stick take a step back and ask the question, take a pause, not maybe not be reactive and, and slow down and, and really um, lead with empathy, as you're saying. And there's a couple of people in the audience who also, Marshall, Jasmine said that empathy is key. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Michelle says, empathy is trying to understand someone else's point of view while acknowledging you will never 100% understand someone else's point of view, which I think is where yeah. you, were, you were saying that as well. So, and hello, Omar uh, from Percepta. Thank you for, for joining us here today. So, Marshall, I think that all gives us a lot to think about as we go about our daily interactions, just as humans, whether we're in the workplace or at the local coffee shop. Um, you have so much advice uh, that I know I've learned along the way from you, but could you, as we uh, near the end of our show here today, wrap us up with just maybe one or two takeaways that you think are key nuggets that we can all uh, walk away today and implement in our careers and maybe to be better humans along the way? Sure. I think, I think one of the big things in my mind is seeking to understand never stops. Um, because as Michelle said, you'll never 100% understand someone else's point of view. Um, we always have our filters that, that we will carry with us. So as long as you continue to seek, um, and as long as you stay willing to learn and willing to grow, um, you'll continue to grow. And the more you grow, the more you develop, the better you'll be. And as long as you seek out mentorship and are open to mentoring others, you'll find that you grow limbs up and roots down. And as long as you're growing in both directions, that tree will stay balanced. But the minute you stop growing roots and the minute that you, or that you stop growing branches out, the tree becomes unbalanced. So keep growing in both directions. Keep working to mentor, 
keep wor working to be mentored as well and keep seeking to understand and your career and your life will be just fine. I really love that analogy, Marshall, the the roots and the keep growing the tree. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate your time, your insight, uh, geeking out with you a little bit. May I say before we end um, our time with you today and before we head over to hot jobs, of which one is hint to everybody, workforce management related, may I say, may the workforce be with you. May the workforce be with you. And remember, <laughs> empathy is a good lightsaber. That was nice. Well played. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great day. We appreciate Thanks. you being here. Talk to you later. Thank okay, you. Bye. bye. All right, everyone, as you can see, we have a lot of fun here at T-Tech, some really great wizards here uh, behind the scenes of T-Tech. Again, we appreciate you all joining us. We know you may be tuning in because you're interested in joining the T-Tech family. I do see April in the chat hoping to join T-Tech. So we're gonna talk a minute now about how you can join us. We'd love for you to head over to ttechjobs.com that is where you will find what's going on in your neck of the woods in the globe. You can poke around the website, learn more about us, what our commitment to DE&I is, some, some uh, humble brags of uh, some awards that we've won recently, so you can really get a sneak peek inside of our culture. But today we're going to highlight two jobs for you. As Marshall just shared with us, there is a lot involved in some really interesting pieces in the workforce management space. So please come to T Tech Jobs and Google Workforce or Google a search for workforce and see what jobs come up in your area. But we're going to turn over to India. And in Mumbai, we have a workforce management real-time specialist that we are recruiting for to come work on site with us in Mumbai. We hope you join. If you're here from uh, India and in the audience, please do. If it's of interest to you, please check it out. Or if you know of some amazing people, please share the opportunity with them as well. And now we'll turn over to LATAM. Let's go to Mexico, where we were, are looking for an administrative assistant to work with our site leader in our Republica site in Mexico City. It is a great opportunity. I have recently met the site director. He is amazing. I think you're going to have a, a really wonderful time uh, working with the team there in Mexico alongside some amazing leadership so that you can uh, meet some great people in person as we work together there. These are just a couple examples of hundreds of jobs that we have around the world. I did see somebody as a licensed healthcare agent in the chat, and yes, we are hiring for that to support open enrollment here in the United States. So wherever you may be in the world, whatever type of position you may be looking for, please head to T-Tech Jobs. And again, we appreciate you joining us here today. We hope you're walking away with a, a little bit of a pride celebration and an understanding of how empathy powers us all in our careers and in being better humans as well. If you uh, subscribe to our profile uh, on T-Tech on LinkedIn, you will never miss an episode. So please head over to our profile and we will catch you back in two weeks. Thank you to our guest for being here today. Marshall Lee, may the workforce be with you and everyone have a great rest of your week. Thanks for tuning in.